why do we need GMOs at all? We've been modifying organisms ever since the dawn of agriculture, mm -hmm. right? There, there are no herds of wild milk cows wandering the countryside. They, we invented a cow for our purposes to get meat and to get milk. And, and we, we cultivate, we use the word cultivate, but it's really you're genetically changing corn from whatever cavemen ate to these big old sticks of corn that we now munch on. So this is true for essentially every food in the grocery store. Yeah, that's correct. And genetic engineering and a, another approach, genome editing, these are more modern tools, but we've been, it's been about 10,000 years of history and there's been changes along the way. Mendel discovered the genetic basis of inheritance. Um, farmers started mixing two species together through grafting. Uh, there's mutagenesis, hybridization. So there's many different types of techniques and genetic engineering has been around for 40 years um, and is one of the newer techniques. But what we do know is that every major scientific organization in the world, including the National Academy of Sciences, the European Food Safety Authority, and many other organizations have concluded that the process of genetic engineering is no more risky than conventional breeding. And in fact, Genetic engineering has been used for 40 years. It's been used in cheeses, in medicine, and in crops. And there hasn't been a single case of harm to human health or the environment. It doesn't matter if you live in France or if you live in the United States, the scientific community has reached a consensus. But you see that these different, um, these are three hot topics, vaccines, climate change, and so-called GMOs that have been extremely politicized, making it very, very difficult for consumers to really access accurate science-based information. Is it possible to be an organic farmer of genetically modified foods? So according to the National Organic Program Standards, if you want to be certified organic, you cannot grow genetically engineered crops. However, you can grow crops that have been developed through mutagenesis or hybridization. You can buy your seed from Monsanto. You could do pretty much everything in terms of planting genetically improved seeds, except you cannot, for example, plant the genetically engineered papaya that I know you're going to talk about on your show and be certified organic. So they're, so they're distinguishing genetic engineering, which happens in a laboratory, from the genetic changes that were brought about through a crossbreeding and the history of this exercise going back to the dawn of agriculture. Well, that's partly true, but a lot of crops that organic farmers and other farmers grow have been developed in the laboratory. So it's not necessarily a laboratory step. There's not really a scientific reason for excluding genetically engineered crops from organic agriculture, but there's a historical reason. Why do we need GMOs at all? I mean, I know your answer, but I just want to just hear it. What is the so need So it's not for? that we need so-called GMOs, but we need to advance sustainable agriculture. And there are many important tools that we need. And as I mentioned before, we need ecologically based farming practices, but we also need seed. That seed could be developed with many approaches, but for particular, there's some problems that have no real solution except genetic engineering. We know some insecticides are are very dangerous. So there's uh, the World Health Organization reports that 300,000 people die every year from overuse or misuse of insecticides, uh, mostly in less developed countries. They don't have um, safety measures that, that they can take. You've been listening to Star Talk, and I've been your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Chuck Nice, as always, thanks pleasure. for doing this, and thanks to, to Pamela Ronald for being on the show. And as always, I bid you to keep looking up.